Vesna Vucinic Neskovic. I'm professor of anthropology at the Department of Ethnology and Anthropology of the Uni University of Belgrade, Serbia. The possible ways of developing this whole um, project, let's say, of, of, uh, or thinking about the non university education. Um, one is to do nothing, right? I mean, within the, the global organizations, let's say, and just let things go on spontaneously in each country as they, you know, as the members of associations or faculty members or other anthropologists uh, think they, they, you know, uh, of appropriate ways to develop it or not. So this, this is one possibility, of course. Uh, the other possibility is to try to introduce anthropology as a subject or ethnology. Sometimes it's in some uh, uh, areas of the world, mm -hmm. it's called ethnology. Uh, to introduce it uh, as a subject in uh, let's say secondary schools. Uh, first of all, maybe as um, a language, uh, as a, a cor um, optional course, and then maybe slowly as a mandatory course. This is another possibility. The third possibility is that uh, the anthropologists, educated anthropologists, be able to teach geography or history courses, right? And basically bring in the, the anthropological content uh, into these courses. Because in many places nowadays, as you probably know, it is possible that within the mandatory curriculum of each course in, in high school, uh, that the teacher, him or herself, can bring in some other content which can be recommended by the ministry or the school or uh, to be of his or her own choice, right? And also there are, there are even textbooks which are nowadays published which are kind of for these alternative or um, uh, extra courses. Uh, for example, in Serbia, my colleagues have uh, produced textbooks for the first four years of elementary school, which can be used by, by uh, teachers to bring in some content. And there are even some exercise books where children you know, draw things or they're being acquainted with traditional ways of um, everyday life or, um, uh, I don't know, preparing food or spending free time in the village. And the, and, the, and the city environments. Uh, so uh, this is also a possibility. Uh, and this is much better, of course, than to just produce some kind of textbooks or, or learning materials and have them being used by non-anthropology uh, graduates, right? So that would be a case of, for example, uh, a person who graduated history taking the, uh, the textbooks produced, let's say, if possible, by ethnologists and anthropologists, and using them in class, or in history class, because they don't really understand then what anthropology and what this, uh, what this material is. Uh, I think you really have to be educated uh, in anthropology, at least in undergraduate or master's level, in order to understand what the questions are that we ask, and what are the aspects of the culture and the way of life, uh, life that, we, uh, that we want to pay attention to. The fourth possibility would be to experiment, to let's say find um, schools uh, which would be able, uh, which would be wishing to implement some, uh, you know, educational program or part of the curricula, which would be, for example, coordinated by people from the nearby university, mm -hmm. from the anthropology department, and which they uh, would let the anthropologists come in and maybe hold some classes or workshops or something like that. Now. There comes again this Petnica Science Center, which I would like to uh, tell something about, uh, as, as, a, as far as I know, unique uh, alternative institution. Uh, it actually uh, exists since 1982 in Serbia. In the, it was founded in a village near the town of Valjevo, uh, where a, a group of teachers, uh, uh, secondary school teachers, dissatisfied with the way uh, science was taught in, in uh, secondary schools uh, were um, organized themselves 
and they founded this institution uh, and started organizing uh, research educational courses. So it looks like this. And in, in, this is in all sciences. This is in natural sciences, in technical sciences, in social and humanities. So nowadays they have 15 programs. How it goes is that it's an it's a annual cycle, annual program, uh, that consists of four parts, four, let's say, seasonal parts. So in the winter, uh, usually sometimes around January, February, the first group of secondary school students is recruited. They're highly motivated and recommended by their high schools. So they have to apply. They come from all of Serbia, nowadays even from all of former Yugoslavia. Uh, and they apply. The, the committee chooses the ones which they think are most motivated and best students, best candidates. And this usually group starts uh, maybe with 30 students. Uh, they come for a week and uh, professors from the university usually or from the Ethnographic uh, Research Institute, uh, they come to hold lectures and to show what actually anthropology is, what themes we deal with. Uh, students listen, then sometimes, you know, uh, uh, people, students attending other courses, like or other programs, like math or science, they also come in, so they learn about what's going on. This is nice, that they mix. And then, uh, th after this uh, a week, uh, basically, uh, students who get, uh, become interested enough, they uh, decide to come again, and they uh, kind of start thinking about their own little research project. So then, uh, two months later, in late uh, spring, let's say, February, March, they come again for about four days for the methodology course. So they learn about the basic methodology principles in anthropology, and uh, they try to start thinking how they can apply it to their research theme. Now, the research theme can be a variety of topics. They can do research in their own home places, right, in the field. They can leave it to do it in the Petnica village, uh, where, the, where this uh, uh, research center is located or the nearby town of Aljevo. Or they can do, you know, they can um, do something on literature, from, from the literature or um, newspaper um, analysis or films or whatever. It also depends on the coordinator or the main coordinator who uh, determines the variety of themes and maybe one, one main theme. Then they come again in the summer for another uh, two weeks. This is called kind of a summer. Uh, summer uh, camp where they develop these topics. Then they are every day in contact with um, coordinators. They go into the library. Petnica has a huge library. Also, what is interesting, uh, the principle that the undergraduate students in anthropology uh, come also, like maybe four or five or six of them, they're also specially chosen, uh, they also come to participate as instructors. So basically you have the you know, the full-grown, let's say, uh, anthropologists from the department who are the coordinators, usually one or two. Then you have these undergraduate students who also help, and then you have these secondary students who are actually participating uh, as, as researchers. Then they, they are supposed to, after the summer camp, this is where they're supposed to kind of draft also their papers, and they, they finish writing them there or when they come back home, and then they present them at a conference uh, Petnica organizes a conference for them where the papers are presented and the best papers who are, which are also uh, reviewed uh, get published in the Petnica notebooks, uh, the journal. And then in the end, in the fourth session, uh, which is in the fall, sometimes in September or October, uh, they again can have a four, uh, a four let's say, day um, session where uh, things are summarized or a new topic is presented to kind of capture the attention of these students for the next year. Uh, together with my colleague, uh, Slobodan um, Nomovic from your department, uh, we actually set up, we initiated and organized this first course in sociocultural anthropology. Uh, earlier on, it was interesting, they didn't have it, of course, and there was only the most uh, related to um, courses were, I think, history, but archaeology also. So actually the idea to invite us and to set up cultural, social cultural anthropology was by this uh, young colleague, an archaeologist, who actually was interested in the theory of anthropology, you know, and he wanted to bring anthropology there. Uh, this is not, uh, this is also interesting for the Serbian context because we don't have this uh, 
core field method uh, uh, principle, like in the U.S., of having together within anthropology, uh, cultural anthropology, archaeology, social linguistics, and uh, what uh, social linguistics and what's ah physical anthropology. We don't have such a system uh, over there in Serbia, and this is usually the European tradition. They're all separate disciplines, uh, but I guess uh, this archaeologist was influenced by the. Uh, maybe by the U.S. probably approach and, and actually to the theory of anthropology we, which is so useful for, for his field and that's how we were invited and ever since we, uh, we started this course but then the younger colleagues continued and every few years there is a new coordinator and uh, this, this whole center has developed even physically, structurally because it used to be very simple uh, you know, a complex with um, dormitories, with uh, uh, one dining room, administrative building, and uh, one building with classrooms and some labs, but now it has been extended and it's very much bigger, very much uh, uh, more, more nicely, uh, let's say, uh, and more functionally organized and so on. First of all, just to say that ethnology and anthropology is represented in our school system, educational system, uh, on the level of universities. Uh, only at the University of Belgrade, which is the major public university in Serbia. It has its, its um, uh, let's say, um, charters uh, in other Serbian cities, but it's the largest in Belgrade, which is the capital of Serbia. And uh, it, uh, our department is called the Department of Ethnology and Anthropology. It, it's quite large, actually. We have uh, 16 senior faculty and about nine junior faculty part-time. Um, we accept about 55 students per year in the first year. There is no other ethnology anthropology department in the country. Now, at the secondary school level, we don't have anthropologists em uh, employed as teachers, except in the ballet schools, <laughs> ballet schools and music schools of the secondary level. This is where they teach either ethnology, basic ethnology, and ethnomusicology. <coughs> this is it. We would also like to do something about it, and we hope that uh, within the WCAA, the new project, the main project, will uh, that is announced as the project to deal with non-university education, will kind of stir, uh, stir the ideas and uh, invite new ideas and uh, stir the. Uh, initiatives, new initiatives to try to do something about it. Um, what we were thinking of is that, back my colleagues and I who are thinking about it at the department, that uh, maybe it wouldn't be the best idea to, to try to push for anthropology or ethnology itself because people know about it, don't know about it and the people in the ministry don't know about it really, what it does, why it's useful and so on. But that we try maybe with some optional courses of two types. One that could be called something like traditional cultural heritage, you know, where because our science is still recognized in Serbia as the one dealing with traditions. Mm -hmm. And then it wouldn't be maybe so hard to introduce it as a as within a, a, a an optional course that deals with cultural heritage. Uh, and the second maybe optional course could be something like uh, the cultures of the world, you know, where they would learn about cultures from all over, religious systems, you know, these things that are most cuisines, whatever, languages, language groups, uh, even it would be interesting maybe to introduce some things that the young people uh, would be interested in, like, you know, sports around the world or traditional sports around the world or uh, whatever, new, new trends, uh, new uh, cultural trends and so on. So we are thinking in those terms, but uh, we will see uh, how this whole initiative, global initiative, will develop, will develop within uh, WCA and the WOW as a whole, uh, as well as uh, how it can develop in our country itself and different countries. <laughs>